Hello, hello, hello. Hey. Hello, John. Migration hey. Matters Festival is back. <laughs> yes, 2020, we are online. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My name is John Rothermach, and I'm here with... Uh, Chiwe Chihana, your hosts for Migration Matters Online Festival 2020. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Yeah, so tonight is, you know, we're here, we're here. Who knew we would be? Who knew that, uh, you know, given what's going on in the world with COVID, uh, that we actually would pull this off? Thank God to our festival director, Sam Holland. He's, he persevered and I, we are going to be having a chat with him later to see what he thought about. But I am so glad, <laughs> I am so glad that we are here, you know, celebrating. Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely, definitely. I think it was a good call on the board as well to, 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 to bring this together. And also credit to the team that has worked alongside um, the board of trustees in getting this together, because at one point, I believe the festival was not going to happen this year at all. That's correct. Yes, there was there was a period of uh, just limbo, like, what are we going to do? Are we going to are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, this we all this is a very new to all of us. This is very new to you joining yeah. us online for the first time. We appreciate you. Just you know, come with us on this journey. We have no idea what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing week. That's the one thing we definitely yes. know. Yeah. And tonight we're launching with everybody across the world. So our audience is not just a Sheffield one, it's not just a UK one. We've got a whole world with us this evening. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Could you give us a, a feel of what, what to expect tonight, John? Oh, tonight, tonight's going to be exciting. But yeah, I just want to say, Chiwe, what you're talking about there, like uh, what we're about to, exp uh, the fact that Migration Matters is uh, going online, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big blessing because anyone in the world can tune in now. Anyone in the world can just see what we're all about and why we celebrate what we celebrate, why we do what we do. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, yeah, tonight, tonight's going to be exciting, exciting. We got uh, something from coming from SBC, which is uh, the first ever theater company of Sanctuary, you know. And then we go, um, we've got something else coming all the way from Taiwan later on. I can't wait. They were very good in 2018 when they performed, and they've got something for us. That's all three eight, and then we shall be closing with. Uh, a choir from Sheffield. You might be familiar with them, but it's going to be an exciting, exciting journey tonight. And Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. And, and also just to say, we want to thank all the partners that are helping us broadcast this festival. So all the media partners, including Sheffield Live, who've managed to help us get this festival to our traditional Sheffield based audience, those that cannot access technology, to the Arts Council for, um, for funding us, uh, Paul Hamlin Society Foundation, and quite um, the University of Sheffield, and some generous people out there who've donated to us. So thank you very much to everybody for making this possible. Um, this year, we're not, as, as per every year, we do not charge every event is free, but we're accepting donations to some charities, which will be profiling, so it's South Yorkshire Refugee Law and Justice, and Last Sheffield, so that's Lesbian Asylum Support Sheffield, those are the two charities that will be supporting this year, alongside proceeds going to support the festival's continuity. If you would like to donate, you need to go to migrationmattersfestival.co.uk forward slash donate. Yes, please put some money in our pockets so that we can continue doing this fantastic work we are doing. And also, so the charities um, Chiwa is talking about, that's a tradition, that's traditional to us. Every year, we pick two charities that we support. And uh, this year, it's, it's, you know, the two fantastic charities that uh, Chiwa just mentioned there. So anything you give towards us is going, is also going towards those charities. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So we're running over a five day period as per usual, as part of Refugee Week. So we always support Refugee Week. We always present our festival during Refugee Week to both showcase the talent within the migrant communities locally and uh, across the world, um, but also to, to raise awareness around issues that affect asylum seekers and also to champion them because they are invisible in most art forms and, and they are talented. There are artists out there with so much talent from what from wherever they come from and, and, and they bring that to the table. So this is one of those platforms, isn't it, John? 
definitely, definitely Chile, especially with uh, what's currently happening in the world, you know, with uh, in terms of um, racism and whatnot, you know, this, this feels like a, a real ripe time to be representing uh, people of all uh, disciplines and all denominations, all cultures, just in one city. That's why we do what we celebrate this. We celebrate the fact that we are multicultural. Like, I love that. Like, I just love that. I love that it's in Sheffield. <laughs> and for once, honestly, I'm so excited that the whole world can see this. You know, um, I just. Yeah, I'm but, dude, super... this is year five. Would you believe that? This is the fifth year of Migration Matters Festival. How's that? Who knew that we would be online in year five? Who knew <laughs> in that? year five, we've in gone online. Five. So talk, talk yeah. to me about uh, Music and Love Band. You were just you just hinted oh, a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, Music and Love Band are uh, an incredible, incredible uh, band. Either, some of them are in Sheffield, some of them are in Rotherham, but you know, they have been part of the festival for a while and uh, they, they they performed, I believe, last year or 2018. Man, I for me the we've year had just them, I think, the last three years now. actually. Three yeah. years running, we've had them. Three, yeah, yeah, three years running. Yeah. And every time I listen to them, I'm just like, ooh, this is music. This <laughs> is music because, and why that is is because the music is so, is is an imagination of so many different cultures, you know, coming Absolutely. on one stage and just saying, this is who we are and this is what we have to offer and we hope you like it. And that's mm -hmm. beautiful, you know. And okay, I, Sh shall we so head into it then? Yeah. Let's head into it, Kira. Let's, well, I, think, I think they've been waiting longer, long enough. Uh, let's head into it. And uh, yeah, opening up Migration Matters Party, Migration Matters Online Festival, Festival. Party <laughs> 2020. Please welcome Music and Love Band. Enjoy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Musical Love, and we have Jane and uh, Paul, and we are going to be doing uh, some music, some uh, world music for you. Um, even in this difficult time that we're facing with this pandemic issue, we have tried our best to try and bring the three of us into what we call a social distancing performance. So, as you can see, we are far apart from each other, and we are going to do uh, some music for you. And our first song is a traditional uh, linked kind of a performance and it's called Nyani Nyani. Enjoy the song. Thank you. 
next song is called Ababugasa Ramachangani, which is a Zimbabwean a traditional song which uh, I grew up listening to uh, people uh, dancing to it, calling for rain and uh, we're calling for uh, a better life. You know, we're going through this very difficult time, but it never stops us from playing music. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy our next song, our next Ndebele song from Zimbabwe, Ababogasa. I will start by praising uh, all the kings and then we'll go into the song.
is a song that captures that spirit.
just about chilling in the sunshine.
very much. Hope you enjoyed our music. This is the piece that we have decided to give to you um, during this uh, pandemic issue. And we hope everything will be all right. Let's remember to stay at home, keep the distance. Mm -hmm. Let's do some social distancing and stay safe and wash your hands at any given time. <laughs> Thank you. What an amazing, amazing job done by Music and Love Band. Um, naturally, I'm biased, I'm Southern African. So yeah, to the Ndebele Kings that were championed and that's on one of those songs. Yes, listen, Chiwe, when it comes to um, music, I think yeah. Southern African music is the best, best music in the world. That's yes. my opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm African, but I'm, I'm defending, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm East African, but I'm defending Southern African music here. I think the Thank sounds you. that come from that part of the world are just incredible. It just, I, I just love it. I love yeah. It. And yeah. if, if you're watching this from anywhere in Southern Africa, please write in the comments. Let us know where you are. Or if you're of Southern African heritage, please write in the comments where you are. And if you're leaning towards the east and trying to support John here, please get there and wherever else in the world, because we know we've got an audience coming in from Taiwan at a later time. Mm -hmm. um, just moving on from that, I'm really, really honored to be uh, introducing to you one of the charities that we're actually supporting this year. Um, that's LAS Sheffield, that's Lesbian Asylum Support Sheffield. And LAS Sheffield is volunteer led. They support self-identifying LBTQ and non-binary um, women. And, um, and so yeah, it, funds that we're raising today will go in part towards supporting them. Let's have a look at LAS Sheffield. So what I'm going to say about us, like I say, it was found in August 2017 and up to now we are still supporting women, right? And as a migrant coming to the UK, fear flees from persecution, you are here in a place you don't know what it's like for the first time, you are here in a strange place, you don't know what is allowed and what is not allowed. So like, some of us have gone through a lot from our country of origin. So coming here, we think that all oh, gonna be the same. So me and I, myself is an example of that, and other ladies in the last group are like that as well. So if you don't know where you can get your identity in a safer way, you can be who you are in a safer way. It's a bit challenging. So what we did is to form the group, and in Sheffield, with the group was uh, really, really needed at that time. Cause when you think of like, like me when I was in Sheffield, I came to I, I was in Sheffield 2013, and I didn't know anything, any support group who can support me to be confident of who I am. And uh, I found out that that's needed. So I, I, my previous lawyers were always saying to me, do you just supporting group? What group do you join? I was saying, I don't even know what is that. But like, end of the day, I managed to get to my Google. <laughs> Thank God to Google. And I tried to look for supporting group I support asylum seekers who are lesbian or in the LGBT community and I found out that they have a magister and I contacted the person in Manchester and I got this call so to cut the shot the my <laughs> my video shared so like when I went there I got the information I saw everybody, everybody was lively and bubbling I said okay this need to be in Sheffield as well. So this is how we found LAS to support other women. Um, LAS is very important to me. It's a very, very important group 
And because with last, I'm able to be myself without fear. I'm able to continue to live. And uh, I find that uh, over the time being a member of LAS, I not able, bold enough to express myself or my feelings. I'm able to make suggestions or share some ideas which I was never able to do. LAS gave me strength. It gave me strength to keep on. Members are loved, they are warm, they are welcoming, they listen to you every time you have something to say, even if you have to keep repeating myself, they just keep listening. They do not disrespect, they do not underrate, they value, everyone is valued at last. Hi everyone, I'm a member of last. I want to say a big thank you to the team and organizer of LAS is being a great home and a welcoming home. Um, I want to say if you haven't been there, you need to try and see how lovely they are. I'm so happy to be a member and I urge each and every one of us to try it is a welcoming home. I know it's been so miserable past years, but when I met LAS, I had a restful mind because the welcoming hand is so lovely, it's so adorable, it's so welcoming, they are so organized, the love each and every one shares there, it's so welcoming. I want to say, come to the home, try it and see how lovely they are. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm a member of LAS. I want to say thank you to every member of LAS. Without you guys, I wouldn't be myself. I miss and I love you all. Love is a beautiful home and a welcoming one to everyone. It's nice being with you all. At last, we laugh, we make jokes, but mostly we support each other. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Hi. Yes, you listening. Smile, be happy, only makes things better. I am a member of LAS and my, oh my, I have to say, LAS is amazing. It is filled with loving, caring, and the most supportive women who have been through it all, but managed to pull through. And in that again, and in that again, they gained so much strength and wisdom to help others out there in need. Last has been so good to me. I am beyond grateful to be a part of such an inspiring group. I can't thank them enough. Thank you. My name is Claudine, and I'm a member of Last family since 2017. Last is a very important group you could ever join, especially when you know when you don't know who you really are, when you're struggling with finding yourself, if you're feeling lost. This group and its lovely volunteer are there to help you. They have turned my life around from one lost and lonely young woman to an outgoing person, a very happy person, very determined, and who is right now succeeding and if it weren't for them, I don't think I would be where I am today. And for that reason, I am so grateful to have joined LAS. I am so grateful for those who come together to form this group. They were there for me in my moments of struggle, battle with me through tough times and to my victory times. Um, yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Elsie and I am very grateful for Lars. Um, me and my family, we joined last, last year, sometime last year, early last year. And we've been welcomed into Lars family, as a family. And the love we received at first go lasted and it is still going on and we are still loved by the last members 
I would like to thank Lars for what they've done for us, for me and my family. If it was not for Lars, I don't know what we would have done or how we would have survived through this epidemic. I'm really, really grateful for the help we received from Lars. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, hello, welcome. Yes, it's incredible to see that those stories and those um, you know testimonies. Uh, what I love the most was uh, when somebody introduced themselves and then say, "Hey, you, you there watching? Smile. You know, it will make it will make all, all things better." I just that, that just got me, especially yeah, what's been going on in the last two weeks. I was just like, yes, a bit of smile, just makes things better just a bit of smiling and um, yeah so <laughs> migration matters as i mentioned before we pick two charities and we support them um, charities in in sheffield and one of the charities this year is last you've seen what they're all about you've seen what they do all i'm gonna say is whatever donations you make will support not just migration matters, but will also support last. So I urge you, please just dip, dig, dip, 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 <laughs> dig, dip. <laughs> can't speak okay. anymore, Chiro. I can't speak <laughs> anymore. <laughs> dig deep and just, yeah, support us, please. Uh, again, to donate, simply go to www.migrationmatters.co.uk slash, slash donate. And uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Now, uh, it comes to uh, an exciting time. We do this, we did it last year, we did, we did it a year before where we just chat to our director, festival director, the minds behind, behind all this, why we're here today. And that is Sam Holland. Hello, hey, Sam. Sam. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thanks. Hello, spotting your nice mustache, I see. I was wondering how long it would take for that to come up. Literally two seconds. <laughs> really lovely to have you um, uh, join us, uh, Sam. Um, brilliant as well, the charities that we're supporting, but I think people would like to know how have we got here this year, given that the, the landscape has changed totally from what we're used to with Migration Matters Festival. Yeah, so we've, we've really, we've thrown ourselves into the deep end and it's been, you know, quite a journey. Two months we've had to sort of turn around a festival that was obviously going to be featuring sort of upwards of about 70 events and about 20 different venues across Sheffield. And now we found that our venues are things like our website, Zoom, Facebook. Um, so it's been a real, it's been a real challenge. And I've kind of had to rely a lot on our team to sort of, you know, to sort of adapt and change accordingly. And I tell you what, they've done a pretty, pretty amazing job, um, given that like none of us are really particularly familiar with, with, you know, making, you know, doing stuff online and having a kind of a digital presence. But it's, it's been, yeah, it's been a bit of a mad one. But um, mm -hmm. I'm sort of, I'm glad that we've gone through with it. I think it's really important that we're doing events like this. And it's so important that, you know, we're also giving platforms to people and, and also allowing people to kind of enjoy the arts and, and cultural events, because it just felt as if, everything was just going to be postponed or cancelled so to be able to do this has has been yeah I think I think it's really important that we've gone through with it absolutely yeah. thanks a lot Sam so why migration matters festival why why yeah what what, what was you what was the inspiration what happened how did you get here migration matters festival it, it sort of I guess it was sort of inspired by I guess I think a collective concern about what was happening um, particularly in Syria, but also for me, it was like, you know, I remember as a kid growing up in Sheffield when the Kosovan community sought refuge in the city. And I was, I was always incredibly proud by the response. I remember playing football with a bunch of kind of boys my age, you know, about, about when I was about, about nine or 10. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just remember there was a, a real, like every, every one was sort of behind welcoming and making Sheffield a place of hospitality for these people. And, and I just sort of seeing the way that the, the, the narrative changed, the way that things were spanned 20 years on mm -hmm. and 
the way the, the the refugee and the way that these sort of labels were sort of made to be these kind of um you know these 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 sort of derogatory terms for people and it was sort of and it, i i just i i felt as if there needed to be something that celebrated actually what refugees what sanctuary seekers have contributed but also the fact that they are far more than what those labels mean they're not they're not just a label they're, they're people you know and i thought that was the main thing and and so you know that's that's kind of what that's what inspired it that's what brought about this festival which only really started as a small grassroots thing over at theater delhi back in 2015 and has sort of yeah has, has kind of grown quite a bit and, <laughs> yeah. and five years on you've gone global that's amazing that's brilliant what should people be excited about this year as far as you're concerned oh, god i mean i can't, uh -huh. I can't make me pick i mean it's it's just uh -huh. i think it's <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really cool that we were able to do things that we would never have thought of doing because obviously, you know, having, you know, putting out commissions for online work or things that would be digitally accessible, you know, I think is, is that's, that's made this incredibly exciting, you know, the fact that we can, we can actually welcome work that, you know, that like, for instance, we're putting on a, we've got a podcast on the website um, called yeah. Integrate That, which is, um, you know, it's all about, uh, you know, sort of actually showing not just the sort of the, the difficulty of the refugee journey but also about the kind of the, the funny stories that they encounter as well and actually adding a little bit of humor into what is usually kind of a quite difficult and and sort of harrowing topic and so we've 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 done things like with like that and we've got sort of this some brilliant things that have been tailored to our to our website and uh, that have a sort of digital you know digital presence so um, so that's really exciting. I think that's really amazing. But it's also just the fact that, you know, there were a lot of groups who approached us and said, we really would love to still do something as part of Refugee Week. And I think the idea of giving people platforms during this time when, when there really hasn't been anything, um, you know, for them to sort of to, to be involved in and to participate in. And for actually for a lot of groups who, you know, already feel a bit marginalised to be a part of something like a festival, you know, means a lot in difficult times. Yeah. Right. And, uh, sorry, Chiwe, yeah. can I, could I, could I dive in? Can I just mm -hmm. ask ahead. this man one, just a question or two. So um, there's a thing that's been done this year, isn't there? The guest curator. I think we're going to have a chat with uh, the person at the, uh, at the end on uh, Saturday uh, when we are closing the party. But what's, why did that come about? How, why did you think that was something valid? Well, so our guest curator this year is uh, an amazing artist um, and a theatre maker called Hal Yuan, and he he has been um, you know he's 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 been involved in the festival as a, as just a performer for since since its beginning, and sort of a couple of years ago he sort of approached me saying, um, you know, I I just think it would be really interesting to sort of think about how there can be a, a more diverse programming. And I sort of said, well, yeah, that, that makes absolute sense. That is something that we should definitely be doing because, you know, again, I, it's, I don't think it's necessarily appropriate for one person to be making a lot of those programming decisions. And obviously, you know, there's a whole brilliant board as you guys have been, you know, part of that fantastic board who have helped inform those decisions, but actually having someone external come in and see the way the, the festival operates, I think it's, it's so important. I mean, to be honest, as the festival grows, my, my hope is that we will have an entire team of programmers who can actually program things from, from all parts of the world. And Hal is, is from Taiwan um, originally. And, and so he has he's sort of found artists sort of both within Taiwan, but also in the sort of Southeast Asian region who can be a part of the festival. And it's fantastic because he's got those close contacts and mm -hmm. contacts that a lot of people wouldn't otherwise have. So it, it's, been, it's been brilliant to be able to work with him and to be able to sort of actually give over, give some of the, those programming decisions to him. And I think it's benefited so much. And so, you know, we've, we've, we've got work that will obviously that, that's scattered across this program, which you can see across the website, but also there's gonna be things next year as well that Hal's programmed. So it's really lovely. And, I, and I'm looking forward to actually seeing how, you know, mm. in the future we can, we can incorporate more guest programmers to be a part of this. Right. That's absolutely right. brilliant. Sam? Thank you so much for joining us. I bet people have loved listening to you, but they'll love what John's got to offer next. A bit more, uh, just a one, little bit more. That moustache, has, I just, I just, I don't know. I just. I know you're, you're just <laughs> jealous. I know you're just jealous, but it's, it'll happen one day. You can, you can grow one. <laughs> <laughs> like 26 years and nothing, nothing, um, you know. But I don't know if it's jealousy, but yeah, we'll see. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Sam. You take care.
Okay. Right, right. Now, Sheffield uh, was the first ever city of sanctuary, which is an incredible title to have. Given that we are in Sheffield, we thought, hey, why not bring the first ever theatre company of sanctuary? So we did. SBC are here joining us on um, our opening party in 2020. And uh, there's a little detail. I'll tell you that uh, this was recorded during lockdown on a Sunday morning, would you believe it? And yes, it's lovely, lovely here. And uh, so it's called Sanctuary Songs by SBC Theater, featuring Emily. Okay, I'm, Emily, please, if I get this wrong, forgive me. Uh, <laughs> please. <laughs> featuring Emily Sangazi, Sangaze, Wood, and Zoe Casellerau. Nailed it. So there we go, SBC Theater. To mami na, to mami na, to mami na, so manda. To mami na, to mami na, to mami na, so manda. To mami na, to mami na, to mami na, so manda. Hello, my name is Emily Njangase. I am I'm originally from Zimbabwe. I lived in South Africa since I was young, and then I have uh, lived in the UK for 18 years now. And I was in a play called Tanya. I always remember the main part of it. I'm a volunteer. I volunteer. I always take that one as the first part because it saved my life. And uh, I've just completed my studies and uh, now I'm going to be a professional social work and uh, I'm looking forward to get a job at the moment. I'm just looking for a job. There is a song that you, uh, I will be singing with Zoe. That song is so lovely because it says to my so much, which is literally meaning that send me oh my Lord. So when we are here the Lord can send you to do anything that will be beneficial for others. So that is what we are doing now. We are not doing this for ourselves, but for others. To mami na, to mami na, to mami na, so manka. To mami. My name is Zoe Catilero. I'm originally from Greece and I've lived in Scotland and England. I currently live in Leeds. I was in Where We Began and I was a traveller. I am a performer and as a musician, a singer and a dancer and a theatre maker. And I also facilitate workshops for young people and old people. Sanctuary for me means home and a place to rest myself because most of the time I used to be wandering like a wanderer. But once I found the sanctuary, for me it meant literally what the word means because it was a sanctuary in every way. I was able to get a place of uh, live through sanctuary and they get a, 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 a accommodation and uh, as well education and uh, my life as well. Sanctuary for me means a place of connection, a place of support, um, it means safety and um, exchange. And then the other song, which is says, Gibabaza, Kubukulu Bakonkos, it literally means in English, eh, how great thou art. This song, it means a lot to me because when I was young, when things were hard, I didn't know really that things were hard, but I always used to see my mom singing this song and I would be wondering why then the tears are coming down through her, 
eyes and they were flowing down her cheeks and I was like, is this a sad song or what? So when I became older and the things were happening in my life, I realized that is what it meant to her. So when I sing that song, I don't only sing it for myself, I sing it for other people who may be through the similar situation in a different way. is a Greek lullaby and it's called Ipne Pupernis. Um, it talks about a mother putting her baby to sleep and um, lulling her baby to sleep and asking of death to come and take the baby but bring him back at the end. The reason why I like this lullaby so much is because it combines a sense of tragedy and optimism at the same time. And then the other song which says you are here touching everyone it literally means wherever you are there is somebody is touching you through others and through the things that are happening in your life because it doesn't get to an end because of that somebody who is looking after you who is the higher being if you don't know or you don't believe that, but through the things that are happening in life, you always know that there is somebody who's touching your soul, who's touching other people's soul to touch you and to help you or to see you through everything that you may be going through. Miracle work, promise keep, 
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, you are here, healing every soul. We worship you, we worship you. We make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, you are here, healing everyone. We worship you, we worship you, for you are promise keep, miracle work. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. There were no tears. The second song that I'm going to sing is called Roll Away, and it's a folk song, a song that we sang at the end of the show where we began as a choral polyphonic song. Um, this song talks about leaving, it talks about home, and what it means to be at home, what it means to leave home, and what it means to be forgotten by those at home. There is a place where they will take us, railway line, an ocean liner. There is a place where we won't need papers. Roll away, sail away, far away from my Tenement town, the house is many, railway line, an ocean liner, it never will be a home to any, roll away, sail away, far away from mine, I took a job, I took a lover, railway line, Ocean liner, it was she and I and ten thousand others. Roll away, sail away, far away from mine. Far away from mine, sister, who am I? Seven years. I left you lonely, railway line, an ocean liner. If I come back home, will you even know me? Roll away, sail away, far away from mine. And then the other song that would be Ololiwe. It's uh, like a journey in our lives. Sometimes when you go through a train, it doesn't matter how the, the journey it is in between, but the, what matters is the beginning and the ending. So sometimes when you're taking a journey, you don't know how it is going to be like where you are going to. But once you reach the destination, you don't know if you are going to go back to where the journey began. So that is why it, that song is more important. When I'm singing it, I always sing it for those who have lost their loved ones or for those who have not um, lost them, but hoping that one day they will see them. Nangwa siza Pezulu Enko sini Kuthali Ngwelezo dwa Uma ufuna Ugu ya kona Tandaza Uloli we Wai tutula Uloli we Wai tutula 
uloli wewai tutula nanko siza pezulu enko sini kushali ngelezo dwa uma ufura hugu ya kona tandaza uloli wehehei wai tutula uloli wewai tutula uloli wewai tutula Nangwe siza pezulu enko sini kushali ngelezo dwa uma ufunai hugu ya kona tandaza. Thank you so much everyone for watching this short film. I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, take care of each other and take care of yourself. We love you so much. Thank you very much. We hope you had a lovely time. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ να προσέχετε. Γεια σας. Σια βόγγα κακούλ. Σια τέμπα νι τόγωζε λελέντ. Μι χαλε γαμάντ. Νι τάντα νενόν και σια νι τάντα κακούλ. Take good care. Bye bye. Welcome, welcome back. Really hope you enjoyed that from SBC. Yes. Chiwe, how are you? I am good. The melody yeah. out of that. Oh my God. I, I can't sing to save my life. I croak. Literally, I go, uh. <laughs> I can't <laughs> sing at all, but I would love to sing like that. So yeah. thank you so much, SBC Theatre, Emily as well. Yeah. How was that for you? Great. I mean, I, yeah, like you said, melodies again, southern, southern sounds. Uh, <laughs> southern sounds with a hint, with a drop of Greek, Greece. With a drop of Greek, you know, just yeah. beautiful. Like, yeah, I just loved sort of. Uh, it felt like um, it felt like a mixture between. This is I'm coming from a theater background, but there was like a Greek sort of mythology, sort of soundscape, sort of going on, mixed with an African you know, all storytelling thing going oh, yeah. on, which I'm a yeah. big fan of both. So that for me was like, yeah, this is, this is great. Yeah, loving yeah. it, loving it, yeah, yeah. So um, again, uh, we are taking uh, some donations for the charities that we are supporting. And one of those is South Yorkshire Refugee Law and Justice. Um, would like to introduce you to them. And if you'd like to support them alongside last Sheffield visit migrationmartyrsfestival.co.uk forward slash donate. Let's meet South Yorkshire Refugee Law and Justice. I'm Muhammad Rafi Kulbari. Uh, I am from Bangladesh. Uh, I came to uh, UK 2007. Uh, for some political reason I claim asylum 2012. Since I claim asylum uh, my uh, uh, I back from uh, London to Sheffield. Uh, when I came to Sheffield, I don't have anywhere to go. I don't have any legal aid because of uh, I have no solicitor and and I am unable to get uh, any solicitor because I of, I have no money. And I found South Yorkshire Refugee Law and Justice uh, uh, through Northern Refugee Centre. Uh, say, uh, 2013 and they helping me uh, for prepare my case they arrange solicitor uh, through their case worker but some reason my um, uh, claim was uh, refused uh, and last year again I submitted my, my case through the Sahitya Yorkshire Refugee Law and Justice they are very helpful they every time, every time help, help me um, and I'm getting all kind of support from themselves from their heart they are very good of friend and they are helping me always and uh, I know City of Century since I came to the uh, Sheffield uh, it was before Northern Refugee Center then it's uh, uh, they moved their office to City of Century. Uh, I every time feel City of Century and all kind of uh, City of Century is my uh, my second home because uh, when I go there, 
I am getting all kind of support from themselves. I know assist, uh, I know Red Cross uh, since I came to um, Sheffield. So they are very helpful. They are supporting for, uh, me and my fa family from their heart. And I love uh, City of Century. I love all of the organization because they are very, very helpful. Especially um, like as me who have no solicitor and don't have any idea where they go for they need any, any kind of help. Uh, thank you. yes 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 thank you so much thank you thank you like like you were said before donations are supporting migration matters last and this lovely lovely charity you just heard from so please please donate donate away yeah so right this is this is moving quite fast we're heading towards the beautiful beautiful um evening if you will here in the uk don't know what it's like where you are just keep interacting with us on all platforms just let us know where you are and, and how you're finding this experience whether you're in sheffield or outside sheffield or wherever in the world you are um john this is the fifth year that we're doing migration matters festival what has uh, what, what sort of statistics have we had in the last few years how many events etc oh. just give us a, a, a snapshot Look how you're putting me on the spot, just like that. Um, <laughs> so, if I remember correctly, uh, I can't remember. I can't remember from year one uh, mm -hmm. on. But last year we had 65 e events and uh, six, 65 events, 21 locations. No, 22, 22 locations across wow. Sheffield, and it was the most attended uh, that we, you know, festival that we've ever had because it was our fourth year we've been we've been growing since year one and getting bigger and bigger this year was supposed to be the boom here we are and get you know much much yeah. um, bigger numbers and whatnot but i mm -hmm. think there's a beauty there's a real beauty in being online as we said before the whole world can access us and i think it's also a real thing that we are going to be taking forward move sort of moving forward in uh next year the years to come sort of keeping mm -hmm. um keeping this uh, sort of you know online presence going great stuff Whether that's live or recorded we'll see we'll see how whichever way we do it it has to happen um last year know. was yeah go ahead oh, sorry i was just gonna say for this year we have 45 events All right. uh you know for the for the five days starting mm -hmm. we sort of started yesterday we sort of started you know yesterday we clicked in yesterday but we're properly starting today so across the six days we have 45 events in as opposed to 65 which we had last year but i think it's amazing absolutely yeah. amazing yeah for me i'm excited as well to see um alim kamara the storyteller his storytelling workshops are just phenomenal last year the young people and families that engaged with that were so elated and they wanted more so we've just we've done that this year haven't we we've brought we him have. back for alim you kamara is back alim kamara makes you feel like a kid when you need <laughs> he does. it really does you just you just forget about what's going on and you just you're so involved you're like yeah i want to yeah. play i want to play you know like it's just uh, it's so lovely and he's uh he's fantastic he's so engaging mm -hmm. it's so enriching and the stories he tells are just he tells are so deep you know they have very real yeah. good it's meaning. that west african thing isn't it he's really nailed it the, the storytelling element of, of west africans i, I just mm. love that i adore that now um so apart from alim kamara in terms of people coming back to the show, to, to the festival this year uh we, oh, we had yeah. a lot of calls as well from people around South Yorkshire. Majid, Majid, what's Majid, Majid doing Majid. this year for us? Majid, Majid is coming <laughs> back. Otis Mensa is coming back as well. But Majid, Majid is, uh, yeah, I mean, you just hear the name Majid, Majid in Shabby, and you're like, okay, what's he doing? What's happening? Yeah. And he's having a chat, you know, is COVID racist? Mm -hmm. I really, I, I can't wait. I cannot wait to see what unpacks. Uh, yeah. what's unpacked in that conversation um it's a real big question to ask you know is is COVID, covid racist racist you know such a loaded loaded question like there's so many angles that mm -hmm. conversation could go into you know i i, I can't wait yeah. to see where what he's thinking where his mind is you know um yeah yeah so 
Okay, that's that's that, that's just amazing. So speaking of local acts, I think we have another one that's coming up. Would you like to introduce the next big choir? <laughs> <laughs> they honestly, every time I introduce this wonderful choir to my question matters, I just smile. It just brings so much, so much joy. I want to ululate. <laughs> I miss that in a, in a venue, you know? <laughs> yeah, yes, we did that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's quite powerful. If you can do that from wherever you are, or if you can attempt to do that, I mean, go ahead. Um, I, I'm not gonna, because I, I will look, I'll look very stupid, but you go ahead and, uh, yeah, if you can, do, Chiwa, do you wanna do it one more time? For, for our, if people want <laughs> Give it up for one <laughs> old choir. <Hello. laughs>
morning. Right. Hello, I feel alive and home. <laughs> yep, amazing. Feel alive and home, Chiwa? I feel alive and at home, absolutely. I'm at Migration Matters Festival. That's my <laughs> other home. So I'm really at home today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, these guys, honestly, every time I'm just like, yeah, I just feel so much joy listening to them. Um, yeah, so Chiwa, I was just want, like, I just wanted to, you know, just run something by you, if you don't mind. Oh, the oh, oh we are, is, is, is Sam Holland joining us? Yeah, Sam Holland's joining us. He's just going to be talking a little bit about um, the rest of the program this week and what people should expect and oh, how people sweet. can join in. Um, yeah, so that's what he'll be doing, doing with great, us. Great. Just moment. before Sam Holland pops on, Chiu, mm -hmm. I had a question for you. So, you know, 2020 has been tough. Like, it's such yeah. a hard, hard year that, you know, we're all going through. So COVID-19 started everything and you know, that's, that sort of affected the whole world. It's tough, you know. And then for the black community, they have a, another battle that we are also fighting. Yeah. You know? um, yeah, no, thanks for raising that. Um, I should say that Migration Matters Festival um, as an organization has firmly condemned racism. Um, we issued a statement, so this is the board of, of trustees of Migration Matters Festival. They issued a statement, one in solidarity, but also to uh, highlight that Migration Matters is an anti-racism organization at the core of it and supports diversity and it is, is, is focused on um, fighting any discrimination uh, in, on any grounds. So I'll just read an excerpt of a statement from the Board of Trustees from Migration Matters Festival. The oppression of Black people in the United States, the United Kingdom, and across the Western world is sadly nothing new, with many people subjected to daily prejudice and discrimination. There needs to be far more action from the white community to show the government and elite that this cannot continue, because if not, we are complicit in perpetuating a racist system which believes in the superiority of one race and one race only. So um, thank you very much for, to the Board of Trustees of Migration Matters Festival for coming in into this conversation and uh, reminding each and every one of us out here that this is not a fight for the moment, but it is um, a long-term and should a long-term situation that should be sustained uh, in terms of responding. So any allies that have come out, any empathy that has come out, that has to be sustained, but it should translate into action according to the Board of Trustees at Migration Matters Festival. Yes, yes. I mean, yeah, it's great. It like, you know, my migration matters obviously stands against any sort of oppression and you know racism or what. And it's very clear what the board of trustees have put forward and we are very grateful for that um one thing i would like to point out though that we should remember as well as uh, the fight of racism going on um by black people with you know all other sort of races fighting against this oppression the same thing is happening in palestine and uh, that's a you know, that's a real issue right there what what's being faced in palestine is also racism that's uh, it's a, it's exact same fight that we are fighting and uh, so we stand in solidarity um with everybody being oppressed because of the color of their skin or because of their race absolutely yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to bring Sam Holland into this, this discussion uh, just to talk about the program itself. And I think there's some highlights within the program that will address uh, during the course of the week that will address some of these issues that we've, we've just raised in, in that statement and also just as, a, as an organization. Welcome back, Sam. Hi. Hello. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can do. Yeah, thanks for coming back. Um, we're bringing you in to highlight some of the um, race, uh, race, racial justice uh, focused pro programs uh, that, that we've got lined up, but also just a wider picture after you've talk, spoken about that. Yeah, brilliant. Well, uh, thank you so much also for, for, you know, picking up on the fact that, you know, Migration Matters has made that statement recently and our strong condemnation 
of all that's of all that's been happening both in America and in the UK and to be honest across the Western world. So I think it's so important that you know migration rights is coming out and taking a stance and um, is speaking out and speaking up. Um, and you know we encourage that of of all organisations also within the arts um, and cultural. Uh, scene and and wider than that as well so um yeah thank you so much for for pointing that out and you know we've we've of course we you know as always we're trying to champion um the voices of of people who are marginalized who are oppressed and you know that is a big part of what we do with the program um and so yeah so just sort of wanting to talk talk through sort of some of the things that we are uh, that we put that we put together. Obviously, we've got so much, and I'm not going to try and bore you guys with uh, with my with my voice and my rambling. Um, but so I'll try and keep it as as condensed <laughs> as possible, just so we can get right into into the amazing dance show 038, which is happening after this. But um, yeah, so obviously uh, we've got a packed day tomorrow of sort of amazing stuff that's happening. Um, really excited to be welcoming back Side by Side uh, Intercultural Drama Group who have been doing um, an amazing sort of a, a pre-recorded uh, show which is kind of looking at how each of those each of their members have been coping and dealing with with quarantine but also kind of um, are personifying different characters as well so it's not sort of purely them but they're kind of putting on um, you know sort of different personas but they're it's they're, they're an amazing um, kind of group of, of people who aren't professionally trained but um, are brought together by their love of theatre and drama and um, you know we've we've been really you know it's been brilliant that they've been part of this journey with us for for so long and it's so great to be able to give them all a platform um, and um, yes yeah, so that's going to be that's going to be really fantastic and then we've, we're welcoming back the wonderful SBC Theatre who have uh, who will be showcasing a pre-recorded uh, version of Where We Began um, which um, is is a fantastic show, and that's going to have a sort of post show Q and A. Um, but that's going to be talking about again, sort of things things uh, largely about sort of um, how the sort of asylum process, as well as is, is uh, and the sort of hostile environment, has kind of caused people to um, feel oppressed, and you know how it sort of you know continues to um, sort of stop people from progressing, basically in um, British society. Um, we. In terms of sort of the rest of the week, um, we've got um, an amazing talk by the by the Racial Justice Network. Um, obviously, Chiwe, you you'll know more about that because you were involved in that as from your African Voices uh, platform. Um, so maybe maybe you could sort of sort of say a few words on that because um, obviously give us a little sneak peek because obviously I, I haven't. <laughs> actually right. that. yeah yeah so um on on wednesday evening um at 9 9 30 on migration matters festival we'll be broadcasting an interview with the racial justice network um the racial justice network is based in leeds but they've got operations they've been working with organizations in brazil and in kenya and they're focused on decolonizing education and just d breaking that down and seeing what that means um they also have uh, some cool training packages on, on white privilege. So they've devised a very brilliant uh, package that that uh, white white people talk to fellow white people uh, as opposed to burdening the brown and the black people. So that that's a very good course. And, and yeah, so they went to Kenya very recently and went to a school to speak to 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 girls and and looking at the colonial history. Also, when we're talking about statues here, we've got statues in former British colonies, and so they they, they looked at that and also just um, deconstructed what that you know the the, the significance of that and says what what's this. For. Um, I was very honored to have them. So I had Penny uh, Wangari Jones, who is the executive director of Racial Justice Network. I had an artist, um, he calls himself an artivist. Uh, he's Kenyan based, his name is Gavuku. And we've also got uh, Remy Joseph, who is a lecturer at University of Manchester that was part of that team. So that's something to really look forward to. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. That was incredible incredible it's just this is there's a lot of educative sort of uh, pro programming this year as well as entertaining and yeah it's incredible incredible job of the team multi arts festival that's what that is all about that's what multi arts uh, is yeah. installations as well we also have installations uh, mm -hmm. which started in 2017 i believe um and it's been growing ever since um 
So mm -hmm. online installations, let us know how that goes. Sam Holland, was there anything else you wanted to? Sure, sure. Um, well, we've still got a bit of time to kill. Um, we've got some just to sort of do a little pointer about workshops for people who, who want to get involved. Um, so this is all being, you, you must, you, if you want to get involved, you've got to do that via Zoom and the registration links are on each of our event pages on the website. So if you want to get involved in a workshop, um, please, that's the only way you'll be able to sort of do it. Some of them are being streamed online as well. So for instance, we had the amazing uh, uh, Angelina Arbel of uh, Malemba, South Africa, who did a brilliant African fusion dance workshop earlier, which some of you may have may have caught. Um, and um, so, yeah, so she, so you can you can sort of be involved in the actual workshop itself and interact, but you can also sort of uh, tune in online. So we've got a number of amazing workshops. Some of them uh, about telling your migration story. One that's one by Carol Lagaida, uh, which will be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we've also got um, an amazing hip hop dance workshop from Cy Rawlinson, who we were lucky to have last year. Um, I'm definitely joining that one. I'm definitely. I can't, <laughs> I dance. I cannot dance. You know, like I'm gonna try and join in, do some hip hop dancing. I want to dance tonight. That's tonight. what I want to do. I'm hey, ready to we dance. Would, if this was, you know, if it was normal circumstances, under normal circumstances, it would have been at Theatre Delhi, and uh, the bar would have been blazing with, uh, you know. Um, but we're here. We're online, and it's good. Right, <laughs> it is, it is indeed. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, but obviously, if you do want a bit of a party vibe as well, our closing party will be featuring, uh, will be sort of led by the incredible Barang, um, who are uh, they've been, well, they've been involved for the past few years and they put on incredible sort of nights, um, across Sheffield, um, with uh, with a number of DJs based in the city, um, playing sort of all kinds of incredible global sounds, um, and um, they are going to be. The headline for that is going to be an incredible DJ from from Uganda, Kampire. Uh, yeah. So from John's neck of the woods, and um, and she is going to be. She's been. She's done a brilliant pre-recorded set for us, um, and she is going to be. Yeah, she's going to be sort of taking us into yeah. the. Can the I just out. say? Can I just say? If you have, if you haven't been to a Ugandan party, you haven't been to a party yet. So, closing party. <laughs> Trust me, it's it's you Ugandans, we party different. We party different. So, you know, come ready, come ready, come ready to sweat, ready to just go crazy. And you know, yeah. Uh, and Sam, I want I wanted to ask you, I wanted, I wanted to ask um is about my mustache again. No, your mustache is I don't even know. I don't even know. It, it's not a conversation we should be engaging in. <laughs> <laughs> but how so sort of I, I was saying earlier that uh, you know migration matters would um, make sure sort of moving forward that we stay online sort of from next year and years to come is that is that a possibility is that something that uh, you know is looking like can happen yeah absolutely I mean I think it's one of the things that out of this um that that you know actually we've one of the one of the kind of one kind of positives to take away from this, obviously, from in in a really bleak situation, obviously, but it's so I think it's so important this 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 fact that we can potentially be connecting with people across the world. I mean, I have no idea where people are sort of tuning in from tonight. Hopefully, um, you know, we've got a we've got a number of people outside of the outside of the UK, um, but you know, we it, it, I think this this is actually something that we've never been able to to realize before. We've never been able to do. And I think actually what we what we'd love to, to do more of and actually, especially given not just sort of, um, you know, sort of trying to combat the restrictions of a pandemic, but also environmentally as well, having to fly people in from all over the world yeah. isn't necessarily the greenest option when actually it's really easy to be able to sort of to connect and to kind of bring people in to do pre-record. So I think there's something in that, um, you know, that, that we can that 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 is really exciting. And, and I hope that we can do, well, I think we will be doing more of that. And obviously, um, you know, there's there's so much potential. And I think it's, we've, we've done so much more on our website as well as, as a result. And we've kind of made mm -hmm. that far more interactive. And I think, yeah, there's a, there's a huge potential here for actually, you know, how many more groups we can now reach or how many, how many people who might not have, mm -hmm. you know, the sort of the opportunity or the sort of finances to actually, to, to, to do a big kind of, of tour across to the UK so it's yeah. it's great opportunity I think for us to to be able to um to link up to collaborate um with with groups and artists across the world um who wouldn't get 
that opportunity. So absolutely, I think whatever happens, we're going to have some sort of online presence, online activity we can, that we can do. And, and mm -hmm. you know, and you know, which is which is already being used by a number of brilliant Sheffield festivals, you know, in the city um, yeah. you know, already. So it's I think we, we, we definitely even though we're a little bit, you know, we're, we're a small festival, but we're growing. Um, you know, but yeah. we I think we can we can kind of definitely go global with this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, thanks a lot, Sam. Absolutely. That that sounds brilliant. But also, I think it, it, it's, it's important to just give a bit more uh, mention to some of the funders who've actually made this possible. Could you highlight some of those, please? Yeah. So so as as with every year, we are we, we, we you know, we will be funded by a number of brilliant, um, incredible organizations and bodies. Um, and this year, obviously, we, we couldn't really do this without um, the support from Arts Council England, who have pulled out all the stops during uh, the pandemic to ensure that as many artists and organizations are funded through this period. They've done emergency funds and they've been incredibly flexible with the, what we've wanted to do. So actually we, we had to get their approval before we were able to do the online and digital festival and they were fully supportive of that. So it means that we can do this festival this year and hopefully when restrictions um, you know, are relaxed, we'll be able to put on a 2021 festival as well. So that's been brilliant. The Arts Council have been fantastic, but we're also incredibly indebted um, to the support from the Evan Cornish Foundation, who have supported us for the now the last three, gosh, I should get this right, four, I think four years. This is the fourth year, I believe, they're supporting us. And um, and again, it's it just means an enormous amount. They they've, you know, they've they've again, they're a locally based, local based charity, um, giving uh, so much support to loads of organizations um and of course as well the the university of sheffield have also uh, once again for they supported us every single year of the festival so a big shout out to them and a big thank you um yeah. and there will also be a few university-led talks as well that will happen this year too um so you can tune into them on tuesday and thursday that's dr iona hein and uh dr jawad shah um, who will be yeah, leading uh, two talks on the Tuesday and Thursday. So do check that out as well. And yeah, it's um, yeah, just incredibly indebted to all of our backers and funders who've been able to make this could possible. I, could I just add to that number yeah. of uh, donors? It's you, um, you that have uh, over the last five years have been buying tickets, donating and supporting us all the way through. It's, uh, you know, we are so indebted to you because Yes, yeah, so we have all this money from Arts Council, Heaven Cornish, and um, the university, and so many other organizations that have supported us in the past. But it's it, the fact that you also continue to sow, you know, into mm -hmm. us and donate into into what my, in migration matters does. It gives us confidence and it gives us um, the assurance that what we are doing is right and is needed. So we shall continue for as long as you are willing to support us. Totally. And I would also like to take this moment to just thank all the partners, some of whom I'll forget, but Festival of Debate, thank you so much for giving us a platform and sharing our program. Um, Link FM for broadcasting um, our programs, thank you very much. Sheffield Live, would really like to say thank you to you. Uh, the Snowdrop Project, thank you very much as well for making it possible for the women who use your service to access the festival. We're really grateful uh, to all those organizations. Last themselves, uh, South Yorkshire Refugee Law and Justice, um, City of Sanctuary Sheffield, and we've also got partners in Finland, Hungary, um, and Italy that are making this possible. And we've also got some people in Zambia that are making it possible for, for people to access some of this uh, um, of the festival this year. We've got partners as well in Kenya, so thank you very much. And we've got families uh, in the United States that we'd like to recognize so thank you very much for making it possible for people to to access this festival this year thank you thank you right right i think we have come to that part of the evening where we introduce the final event sam holland will you do us the honors um sure and i'll do it quickly because actually we are now we're now running late i believe it or not. <laughs> Somehow we we are. Time, and now we're running late <laughs> yeah. um Okay, so this this act is uh, they're, they're an incredible uh, dance company who actually we, we did fly all the way over from Taiwan um, back in 2018. Uh, the Quoshin Chuang Pangcha, uh, the presenting 038. This is an astonishing uh, piece, uh, dance 
performance um, and uh, we're incredibly lucky to be able to have this uh, big thank you to um, Ji Wen Yar of uh, Step Out Arts who's also been liaising with us for that um, and yeah just I'm, I'm not going to really say much else I, I want you to be um, I want you to be wowed by <laughs> by the talent <laughs> that you see on screen um, but yeah this this is um, 038 by Kuo Xin Chuan Pang Cha enjoy成立到今年十二年的时间，其实呢，长时间就是，呃，一直在寻找台湾原住民的身体的新的呈现模式。零三八是我们成立舞团到现在的第四支现代舞的作品。那零三八算是一个很大的题目，怎么说呢？就是我们，呃，希望能够跳脱。呃，原住民的这样的一个身体的范畴，去找一个更大的一个概念来诠释花莲这个地方。那为什么会想到花莲呢？就是这也跟我们舞团的属性有很大的关联。那我们舞团的舞者呢，几乎都是花莲人，几乎都是这个学校毕业的。呃，现在都大了，在外县市工作、念书，所以长时间以来，我们每个月的排练呢，他们都必须舟车劳顿地回到花莲来。然后家对于我们来说到底是什么样的一个概念？这是零三八创作的一个一个缘起之一。然后我们一直很希望能够找到一个东西是能够讲到花莲的，所以我们后来就想到说用，呃，我们花莲在地的电话的区嘛，呃，你必须要从外县市打电话回家，你都必须要先拨零三八这个区域号码。所以我们确定用这个来当做我们的作品的主轴以后，就开始做这样的一个编排。那前前后后排了将近快两年的时间，所以才会有呃去年在爱丁堡艺术节这样的一个呈现，以及今年很开心能够获得到这样的一个奖项的肯定。我自己在创作的过程当中，我试图去找一个贯穿整支作品的一个东西。后来我们就找到了，就是火车。对，那花园人对火车这一件事情，对买火车票这件事情是非常有感的。事实上，你再仔细去看了、啊、服装的部分呢，它有一点点像中古世纪的囚犯的衣服。那为什么是囚犯的衣服呢？因为对整个花莲人来讲，我会感觉，只要是台风，只要是地震，我们这边就好像是一个没有办法出去的牢笼一样，孤岛一样。我们对外的交通也断掉，然后外面的人要进来也进不来，然后苏花公路又常常坍方。这是从小到大我们一直以来的一个，几乎是我们的生活。究竟花莲这个家乡对你来说是家，还是？牢笼，因为很多很多人想要逃出去，在外面工作，可是又有很多很多人想要回来，所以整支作品呢，我们试图用火车站，火车进入到花莲，它会有那个车厢里面的呃题词，比如说花莲花莲站到了，它有国语、闽南语、客家语，多加了一句原住民语，对，那那个在其他县市是几乎没有的，只有花东两县才有，那那个题词一出现的时候呢，其实就。仿佛在告诉我们这些游子们、原住民游子们说：“家已经到了。”我们就开始就会想到说，当观光客或是非我族群的朋友听到这句话，是不是来到了不同的国度？所以整支作品一刚开始呢，就是。
在讲异乡的游子，他要坐火车回花莲的那个意象，这是第一段。然后第二段呢，就是他的一个想象，他呢急急忙忙在在台北，或者是在高雄的月台，拖拉着他的行李，然后准备要上火车的那一刹那，他一转身。看到他手上拉的不是他的行李，而是族人在伊犁信祝丰年祭的手，就是舞者教他牵手呢，跳所有，呃，阿美族伊犁信的几个重要的肢体动作做呈现。这个椅子它其实就是一个火车厢的座位，它也可以是一个候车室的那种等家人来接的。所以我们整支作品呢，椅子的出现占蛮大的比重。然后第三段呢，就是呃沿途的过程，那个心情是很复杂的。比方说，你从台北来到花园的时候，你会经过和平发电厂，你会看到亚洲水泥啊、呃、那些地方呢，就是我们在第三段试图带一些议题在里面。所以在第三段跟第四段的时候，我们后面有一个大的荧幕，让舞者呢奔驰在这个荧幕中间，就是你感觉好像是在奔跑，可是呢，你又感觉好像是在。尽可能的逃离这个家乡。第五段呢是比较特别的，就是在候车室。当你到了花莲之后，你的家人要从家里还要再开车到候车室来接你的那个过程，其实是很煎熬的。另外一个就是你要从家里要从花莲离开的时候，你在候车室的那种焦躁与不安，以及期待下一次回来的时间，在那一段异乡游子的那种回到家、离开家的那种复杂的心境。其实这一支比较特别，是一般来说，就是我们前面两两支舞都是老师会先告诉我们我们的意境是什么，就是这支舞跳到某一段要那这些动作代表什么。可是这一支舞比较特别，这支舞是我们跳跳跳到中间，老师才告诉我们。以前我们需要指导，现在老师希望我们可以从他的舞作里面再去创新，再去内化自己的东西。最后一段是必须狂奔的。我自己跳的感觉，我是觉得那一个狂奔，就是在为了我们最后回到家的那一刻，所有非常非常复杂的心情，想家，想看到家人，想回到自己舒服、躺在舒服的床的那个狂奔。所以其实跳到最后一段，大家的情绪都非常满，就是甚至会跳到哭。我觉得我一辈子都不会忘记那一段我们想要传达的感觉。然后跟我们跳着舞，我们跑步那个呼吸声，跟彼此交错的那个瞬间，就是每一个瞬间都变得非常的可贵。因为最后我们就是大家围着一,一圈，然后我是其中最后一个舞者被大家抱在一起的那个舞者。我觉得我们不论我们今天在哪里，我们终究会落叶归根，就是我们终究会回到家。那那个最后一段的感觉，就是回到家的感觉，对，就特别感动。
。庄国新舞团已经成立，今年是迈入第十三年了。我跟我的太太，我们成立这个舞团，最重要的目的就是让我们在地的这些原住民的孩子，能够有机会，呃，看看世界。看到不同的世界的舞者的舞台，从国小开始呢，北埔国小舞蹈队就常常受邀到国外去演出，那跳的都是呃原住民传统舞，所以这些舞者这些孩子们从小的传统舞的底子就很深厚，因为有这样的一个经验，所以当他们上了国中、高中之后，他们想要继续学跳，又没有这样的一个经济的背景。能够让他们在花莲的一些舞蹈社团继续学舞，所以呢，我们当初成立这个舞团，就是希望说礼拜六、礼拜天来庄老师的舞团练习。对，所以一路以来就是这样的一个成立的呃初衷还有模式。庄老师舞团跟其他的团很大的不同的的属性就在这边，就是这些舞者、这些孩子们都是从小我们一路这样看大的，然后呢，看着他们呃越来越强，看着他们会编舞。甚至看到他们在外面的发展呢越来越好，呃，我觉得我跟我的太太都非常非常的开心。我是第八代，然后我加入舞团其实已经十年了。其实实体上面来说，我觉得从传统舞跳到现在，我真的挺难的。但是这个过程中，其实老师都有安排我们去学不同的舞舞蹈，比如说功夫，比如说。芭蕾等等，对，然后现代舞等等，所以其实这这就是一个在跟自己的身体就是对话的过程，对。就我个人来讲，我会很希望能够，呃，找到一个点，那个点就是说，我们没有在强调原住民的东西，可是呢，你当你一看的时候，你会知道你在讲原住民的东西。我们一直在试图找那一个点。那尤其在零三八这个作品里面，我们一直试图再去做这样的一个实验。对，我们一直在找。我们这支作品在爱丁堡有一个舞蹈的评论家有提到，他一直强调就是说这支作品很特别的地方，呃，跟欧洲系的那个现代舞剧场有一个很大的不同，就是这支作品在他感觉是一直强调所谓的群体性。那其实这个就回归到我自己的创作，其实我有很多的创作的一些呃原动力跟原创性，都是来自于部落的伊犁性。那像我是阿美族，然后阿美族是一个很群体的社会，阿美族是强调所谓的年龄阶层，它是一个非常群体的东西。你在这个群体里面是没有自己的，所以我我觉得在整个作品里面，我有这样的一个编舞的。习惯，那个是很有趣的东西，就是我不希望原住民的东西那么的出来的时候，反而它就很自然的就出来了，它就会出现在我的作品里面，然后也变得很很特别。整支作品呢，就是非常的 local， 在讲花莲，因为一看就知道是花莲的景致，呃，原住民的身体，呃，还有台风的影片都跑出来，所以我们在爱丁堡之后。就从来不会去跟人家解释说这是原住民的，这是花语。就像我们才刚从，呃，曼彻斯特学菲尔，还有八月我们从韩国的艺术节回来的时候，观众他都会以他在地的，尤其现在全球化这么的泛滥，很快的就可以跟他的生命做一个结合。所以整支作品的一刚开始创作的概念就是不要放那么多原住民的东西，试图用很轻描淡写的点过。然后用我们非常非常属于在地的，我们认为的身体的动能去呈现。我觉得零三八这支作品在这个部分是是成功的，可以跟观众有所 touch， 让他们回去会讨论。我觉得这就是一个很棒的一个作品，很棒的一个对话的的空间。对。Wasn't that magical? All the way from Taiwan, that piece was zero thirty-eight, and I found it mesmerizing. John, how was that? Took me back to two thousand eighteen, Chiwe, right back when we had them for the opening party at Migration Matters twenty eighteen. 
Yeah. Oh, I found watching it then, I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. They how synchronized they are, how they move together. It's mm -hmm. then watching it today, I was just like, wow, there's more of them even today. I think there was only six when they performed that uh, in 2018, yeah. but there was eight today and just seeing even in big, you know, with more people, they're still as synchronized. It's yeah, goosebumps, goosebumps. Right. Absolute Love. goosebumps. For me, the 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 sequence with the chairs, mm. that was just like, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> that is humanly impossible. Um, but then what was very humane for me was that huddle at the very end. Because mm. of COVID-19, mm. we haven't had that chance to just cuddle up and hug each other as Migration Matters Festival family. And I really <laughs> wanted to hug you guys today after that. There you go, <laughs> and hugs to everyone else who is watching to tonight. Else. Yeah, um, it's a it's a real. I think talking to a lot of people, the hardest challenge in COVID nine in COVID is uh just seeing the same faces every day and not being able to interact with other people or hug other people physically, and it's it's a real challenge. Yeah. But I can see, I can definitely see how that's connected, you know, with you. And mm -hmm. what a great way of finishing up day of, 20, of being online of being, of being online. online yeah thank you so much for bearing with us we were, we, were, we were figuring it out along with each and every person out there um but yeah looks like day one is done john <laughs> day one is done and please please donate donate please if you can't please donate um there, as we've talked about it throughout the whole night, we're supporting two incredible, incredible charities. Chi, would you want to mention one or two things about those charities again? And yeah, we, we uh, support. The, so whatever donations, whatever contributions you, you make towards the festival will go to supporting two charities, that South Yorkshire Refugee Law and Justice and Lesbian Asylum Support Sheffield and also towards the festival itself in sustaining it. We've got a whole program lined up for you for the remaining week. Please do join us tomorrow online at Migration Matters Festival. Check out the schedule. Please share as widely as possible. Yeah and stand with us um yeah. during this and, time uh, we hope yeah we hope that this 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 is the hug you all needed <laughs> today <laughs> and uh yes uh stay safe stay loving stay loved good night good night